Have you ever wanted to make a silent movie like this? Well, this isn't very difficult at all, so stay with me for just a few minutes and I'll show you just how to do it. G'day superstars, sometimes you get together with a whole bunch of different creative people and the ideas are flowing and everybody's connected in the conversation, they're all part of one big collective brainstorming group, and then someone out of nowhere says, hey, let's make an old timey kind of silent movie. Great idea, but how do you do it? Well, like this. All right, we're in DaVinci Resolve, here we go, here we go. As you can see, we've got a vintage car and we've got a couple of girls in sort of older style clothes that should match this clip really well. First thing you want to do is you want to slow this clip down because this is shot at 25 frames a second and generally, generally older movies are shot at like 12. So we're going to right click on this and go to clip attributes here. Click on the 25 up here. If it's yours says 24 or 30, just click on that. You go to custom and change it to 12 and go OK. Now when you play it back, it's going to be a lot more choppy. And because it's 12 frames a second, you might have to extend your clip out along here because it's playing at a lesser rate. Now, even though it's running at 12 frames a second, it's still pretty smooth. So we're going to change that a little bit. So let's hit the plus button here to extend the timeline out a little bit. And we're going to get the razor blade tool here and we're going to take sections of it out. We basically want the clip to jump and jolt a little bit because film isn't as forgiving as digital. You go back to the move tool here and select those clips, hold control, select them all. Don't cut too much out, you'll get a really big jolt otherwise. And then hit delete. Now when we play it back, it's going to do this. It sort of skips, see how it sort of skips forward? Gives you that old sort of feel. Need a bigger cut out of this one here to make it skip that little bit more. There we go. You look at the door. See how the door sort of jumps forward? That's what we're after. Now, we want to color grade these clips, but the easiest way to color grade these clips is to do them all at once rather than do one at a time. You can do one at a time and then copy your settings across, or you can select all of them, right click, and create new compound clip up the top here. I'm going to call this main clip, like so, and go create. Now all those clips are all one clip. You've joined them all together, basically made a box that they're all sitting inside of. And that way we can color correct them as one. So you go to the color tab now. Okay, the first thing we need to do is we need to make this go black and white. So let's get your saturation tool here and drag it right down to left. And then get, we're gonna get your contrast over here, which is this wheel on the side here. That does your contrast. You've got up and down. What we wanna do is we're gonna bring the shadows up first because just to even that clip out, and then I'm going to go, which is down here, and then I'm going to move left on this wheel and crush those blacks. So when you play it, it's very contrasty. And now we've got that skipping frames as well. It's starting to look a lot better. All right, now that you've done that, click on the edit page again and go to effects. I've got my effects bar already open, but you can go up here to your effects button up the top here. You'll see the word effects. You click on that, and this window will open. You go down to open effects, obviously, make sure that's selected and tick your search button here and hit flicker. And DaVinci has its own flicker function, so you just grab that and put that on your clip. If you leave it like this, it's going to be like this. It's going to flicker too much. It's a bit overdone. So we're going to move over to inspector and we're going to change it a little bit. Now it's already set to flicker gamma, but I'm going to change that to flicker gain. And what you want to do is you want to adjust the range and the speed and the smoothness to how you want. So at the moment, I've adjusted it so the range is quite aggressive to the clip. We've got those skipping frames as well, which really helps. And I think it looks pretty good so far. 
There is one called vignette here, and you can move the range on the vignette a fair bit. But I think it's a bit much. Now, the problem we have now is it's all very consistent and even. So we're going to go down to flicker quality down here. We're going to change the pause length a little bit. So it doesn't flick the same every time. Next thing you want to do now is we want to go to where we wrote flicker before in your in your effects tab. We're going to write film grain or film and you see film grain. We're going to drag that onto your clip. And we're going to go over here to the film grain section. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the opacities. We're going to hit grain only so we can just see the grain. And then we're going to change it from 16 millimeter down to custom. So scroll down and click on custom. And we're going to get the grain size. We're going to make that really large like so. I'm going to play with the grain strength as well and make it a bit more grainy. Once you've done that, untick the grain only button and press play and you'll see that you can see that grain right through the footage. Really helps sell that effect. Also keep in mind that the grain setting is only available in the studio version of DaVinci Resolve. You don't actually need to use it. You can still get away with this effect without using the grain setting. Okay, what we need to do as well though is because the aspect ratio of this is in a 16 by 9 format, that's not how it used to be back then, so we're going to go to the timeline, output blanking, we're going to go to 133. That's going to put those black borders on the outside. But you know what? It's still too sharp. So let's go to color, click on the blur icon here, and we're going to bring it down a little bit, just a little bit. So if you bring it down, it sharpens it. If you bring it up, it blurs it. So we're going to start at 50. Maybe go to 53 or something like that. And you play it back, it's just that little bit softer compared to what it was. Now you've got those borders, you want to create some film damage. So let's go over to Open Effects again and type in film. You've got damage here, you're going to load that in. And when you press play, you're going to get all these scratches and stuff. And of course, you can adjust that to make that stronger. If you go to Film Damage on the Inspector on the right, you can make it, you've got all these settings you can change it to. Now that's all finished if you like it to be black and white, but what if you want to make it like sepia? So let's try that. So the first thing you have to do is you have to go to the Color tab again, and you've got this node here, which is your main footage, but we want to create a new node that we can adjust that'll sit on top of that footage. Right click anywhere and go Add Node and make sure it's a corrector node. Now we want this node to be connected to this node, which is our original footage. So we just hold and click and drag it up until it highlights. See that yellow line, and once you let go, it's connected. So everything on this side of your footage will adjust everything on the left. So if you've got things on the right, they'll put adjustments to whatever's on the left. Now we can go back down to our wheels, our color wheels on the left over here, and we can adjust those wheels to do certain things. As you can see, and you can pick on your reds and greens and whatever, but I tend to grab the middle dot in the middle here, and let's just move it up towards red. Until, and just move it around until you start to see that sepia brown that we're looking for. Now go back to the Edit tab, and press Play, and now we've got an old sepia type movie. It's probably a bit aggressive in the colour, but now I've got the right tone. You hit the saturation, you can bring that down a little bit like so. Now when we go back to the edit tab and you press play, now you've got an old sepia movie of an old car and a couple of gals. And now of course we're going to add some music to sell the effect a bit more. So I've got this Jesse's Carnival Waltz, it's actually from YouTube's audio library. Dragged it down the bottom, cut that to length so we can see it. Now when you press play, this is what you get. Because you're doing an old type movie, you might find that there are things in the background that are too modern, so you have to remove them. So click here now and I'll show you exactly how to do that as well. Thanks for watching.